Okay, so that that was an interesting one. Uh, we, it seems like we're getting a rant in every every week now that we film shows, and I kind of like it. So I think I'm going to keep it going. Um, all right, so another one we got coming up. Vandy has been. I don't even want to say. I don't even want to say up and down this year. They've been mostly down like i think it's probably safe to say that at at some point in the season they were contemplating maybe a little bit of head coaching shopping around um but they they've got a bowl match up against an interesting team in nc state in that nc state i think unlike vanderbilt um even though Vanderbilt has some good wins at the end, unlike Vanderbilt has proven that they can hang with some big boys. Um, and they've done that for a couple of years now. Uh, I know last year they had Brissett and they lost him, but they gave uh, Clemson a bit of a scare. Um, this is a game, correct me if I'm wrong, but unlike the, the previous one we covered with, with um, Mississippi State, this is a game where Vanderbilt really doesn't match up that well. Um, and could probably be in for a long day in spite of ending the season with two big wins uh, to make it to six and six. I could see them really struggling with this yeah. NC state team. I, I totally agree with you. The, you know, I'm, I'm going to basically jump straight in the model in this one. I mean, these are two evenly matched teams on paper. Um, but the problem is neither one of these teams has been in any way consistent. Uh, and there have been sparks of good play and it's easy to sort of buy into them. But with both of them, every time that you feel like maybe you should buy into the football team, you, you get burned. I mean, NC state had a really weak opening schedule, right? William and Mary old dominion, wake forest, Notre Dame opening wins kind of funny when you can say Notre Dame was a weak schedule, but lost Eastern Carolina early. Um, they, they went on a three Oh run, Close loss to Clemson. You thought maybe they're a pretty good team, and they just get the doors blown off of them by Louisville. Lose to a bad Boston College team. And then again, close game with Florida State. Um, beat Syracuse. Then lose to by two scores to Miami. Then beat North Carolina. And North Carolina, again, finished second in the division. Vandy's kind of similar. I mean, up and down all year. Losing to South Carolina in the opener. Uh, got the doors blown off them by Georgia Tech. Beats what ended up being a very good Western Kentucky game. I don't think that gets enough credit. You know, lost to Florida, lost to Kentucky, pretty reasonable. Beating Georgia, great. Losing to Auburn, forgivable. And then you lose by two scores to Missouri. It just, you know, Ole Miss and Tennessee to end the season, you know, I guess that's theoretically two great wins. But I, I think you have to keep in mind that those teams are as banged up as anything uh, imaginable. So I don't really know what Vanderbilt is, but I can tell you this. Uh NC State, you know, their their bread and butter this year was rush defense. They're giving up 77% of opponent rush averages um, and giving up 96% of opponent pass averages. And I think that's why they're so up and down, right? When they played good run teams, uh, they, you know, they struggled. You know, and, and you know, I mean, they, they, they made the other team struggle, right? Clemson really leaning on the run. The pass game wasn't really clicking for them. Uh, Florida State is a run first team. And they were competitive in those games and they beat somebody like, you know, a Wake Forest pretty handily and they beat in, but when they play teams that could really throw uh, and that would be Louisville who likes to throw it all over the yard. That would be Miami with who likes to throw it all over the yard. They lose um, Vanderbilt. Not so clear. I mean, they're actually struggling in the run game, giving up 98% of opponent rush averages. Their strength is more in the pass, giving up 87%. Um, and, and it again, and I say this in it's pure numbers, but it, it makes perfect sense. Struggle in the rush run game. Who'd they lose to? They lost to Georgia Tech, runs the ball. Lost to Kentucky, they run the ball. Lost to Florida, they run the ball. Lost to Auburn, they run the ball. Who'd they beat? Beat Western Kentucky, who likes to throw it. They beat Georgia, who's this year like to throw it because they can't do much else. Mississippi, Ole Miss likes to throw it. Tennessee likes to throw it. So it, it's pretty clear. Uh, but in, in this game, it's bad matchups on both sides. I mean, North Carolina State, they are... You know, for better or worse, they're a pass game, passing team because they don't run it well, so they can't exploit the fact that Vandy can't defend the run. Uh, Vandy is, for the most part, a run team and not a great passing team, so they can't exploit the fact that North Carolina struggle, State struggles against the pass. That's why you get an 18-16 to 16 score. Um, we've talked about it a lot, but when the scores are this low, um, 
there's a lot of variability involved. One bounce of the football, one catch or not catch, uh, sort of ends up determining who will win. Um, and so I think it's an ugly game because neither team has a very good matchup. And I, I think it just ends up being a more or less a coin flip. And I, I don't know. That's, that's what you're looking at. Yeah, I, I think that that's probably the case. I mean, I know we have talked about variab- variability in low scores and um, the fact that for me, I do think Vanderbilt plays a pretty good defense. Uh, I don't like you. I don't think they're elite. I probably think they're a little better than you do, but I also have to put that in context because of how many terrible offenses they played this year. I s- I still can throw out the Georgia Tech game mentally just because it's it's not something that everybody prepares for and Georgia Tech seems to either beat the crap out of somebody or score six points. Um, but I just think that, you know, we talked about both of these teams yo-yoing their way through the season. I just think that, that – NC State's yo-yo is a little less wild than Vanderbilt's. And like you, I think it's so hard to read too much into the Ole Miss win and the Tennessee win because, gosh, these these two teams are just so battered. I mean, Tennessee was battered when they played Alabama, and that was way back in the season. So it just got progressively worse for them. I can't I, I can't put a lot of weight in those wins. So I can remove some of the loss. I can remove some of the win. That gives me a pretty tepid feeling about uh, Vanderbilt. I think it's a great story that they made it to a bowl game. Would be an even greater story if they won because NC State isn't amazing. But um, for me, give me NC State. 24 Vanderbilt 13 I know you gave a model score but what about an actual game I actually like Vanderbilt in this game and the reason is as I said NC State struggles against the pass you have to give Vanderbilt credit they found a passing game with Shermer I'm really not sold on the coach I don't think he's I don't think Mason is really anywhere near close to his on par as Franklin but they can throw the ball well that is NC State's weakness so I think that Vanderbilt may actually be able to win this game pretty close, 27-17, 24-17. I think people give close scores are too close, but I think Vanny wins narrowly. So I think that's enough on that game. We probably spent 70% too much time on that, however much time we did spend on that than it deserved just because it's it's so hard, man. It's so hard to get into some of these lower – tier bowl games and I know a lot of people complain about them like you know you should go seven and five to make a bowl or you should you know I don't I don't necessarily agree with that because I would much rather watch Vanderbilt and NC State play than I would to watch whatever the hell would be on TV on December 26th on ESPN or ESPNU because it ain't gonna be football it ain't gonna be that interesting so from a fan standpoint i think more football is better from a helping these teams in terms of parity and getting better i love the fact that they get some more time to practice um and and i think that these are the teams that need it the most right like like these are the teams that that could most benefit from having two or three weeks at the end of the season to practice so i hate punishing them when they're already bad um Am I crazy in that, or or do you think uh, similarly that that it's not that big a deal that we have 754 bowl games, even though we only have 128 teams? Uh, I, I generally agree with you. I mean, the the shortest answer here is if you don't like the bowl games, you don't have to watch them. I mean, right now, honestly, early in the bowl season, I'm not watching all the games. Don't have time. I'm working, trying to have family coming around for vacation. Uh, I'm just not going to watch all, all the minor league teams playing each other. But at the same time, it's a fun experience for the kids involved. They all get prize packs for a lot of these kids that don't come from a lot. Those little packages of goodies. It's a big deal. It's their only chance to get a PlayStation or something. And, you know, as you said, too, the practice is very important. You know, the 10 days of practice it can mean a world of difference for a lot of teams returning to basics. And I guarantee you, like, uh, you know, Ole Miss sitting at home this bowl season is going to be pretty envious of Vandy and Mississippi State because of the bowl prep they have and the advantage that will have give them going into next year 
uh, and a chance to sort of improve on this past season. Thank you.